Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find us on rebelloveshow.com, facebook.com slash rebelloveshow. We're on YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes. We are also uh, syndicated on JREV and Voluntary Virtues. I am Ron Mathias. I am Joel Valenzuela. And I am Shire Dude. No, you're not. You <laughs> just stop. Just Look, say your name on the show, I'm the man. Desert Come on. Lakes. He's the voluntarist rebel. We're we say our names. Come on, man. Come what, on. What, what are you actually called? Uh, I, I can hardly remember anymore. Drew? Yeah. Is it Drew? Drew Dog. Yeah, Drew Dog? D Dog. And today we have a very special <laughs> guest with us the master of the crypto, the crypto laird himself. All the way from hey. Scotland, <laughs> we have Ian the Marshal. Marshall. Hello, it's good to be on the show uh, all the way from the Highlands uh, to, where is this again? I have no idea. They, they just paid me to the come New up Hampshire. here and they're like, just oh, you're getting, wait, wait, you're getting pre paid? Pre pretend to be a Scotsman and uh, and everything will be fine. Hey, they, promised they, were, they promised they weren't going to break my kneecaps or anything, I swear. This, this, all, he, he I want to get paid. <laughs> no, he, he came out of the Bitcoin donations. I paid him with our Bitcoin donations. Yeah, that's right. Oh. What, why are you spending money on that, man? <laughs> Just kidding. At least he didn't spend the Doge. <laughs> he didn't get squat. <laughs> oh no, you no, can't spend no, the Doge coin. No, the Doge is like we're, you know, it's his value it's in sacred. gold, man. It's you can't. It's, it's just the Scotsman's hold on to that. wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyways, what, what are we opening so up with today? I'm open up with moonshine. Has his moonshine again? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Shire dude over here in his own show, in his own time, in his own effort for reasons beyond me, has dubbed me Moonshine because of my love for Moonshine. Um, and yeah. I took a moon break, a break from the shine, and now it's back. <laughs> I want to start with that. <laughs> Next order of business on the agenda. Crypto Club. There is going to be a new event space in Manchester, New Hampshire, slash social club, dedicated to cryptography, <laughs> to cryptocurrencies and techno-libertarianism at large. And we are getting it on the road. I am, full disclosure, I am involved with it, but so is Ian. Ian's the laird. That's right. Crypto. The dark laird. And so <laughs> tell me a little <gasps> bit. Tell the viewers S at home. Yeah, sell me on the crypto club. Yeah, is it called the crypto club? Is, it, is this what the name of it is? <laughs> Or is well, it's, cri name? it's cryptographic, so you, you can't really know until you've got the price. Until I decrypt it, and then I you find out what the yeah, name exactly. is of it? You need to decrypt it. Okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a map, <coughs> the private key, you put it in, and it sort of... Okay. It knows where you are, the protocol, there's a GPS in there, so it follows So, you like, around. do members have to get, like, the key to find out, like, where it is, and what the name of it is? Yeah, and that's, da -da -da? Right, that's Okay. Right. Now, what was the original name for the quill? What? What was the original name for the quill? Uh, oh, it was really long before I got the. It, it was some porcupine, something. Bullshit. Yeah, it was really long. It was some bullshit. But people don't even call it the quill, but a lot of people just call it the Q. Yeah, and now it's just gotten shortened by popular demand. Yeah, quill. Yeah. Quill was just too long. Come on, I don't have. It's all that day. place. Yeah. <laughs> that place. Okay. Um, the that place. I, I believe that thing that time. the latest iteration for the whole crypto club <laughs> area and officialness is the center for cryptographic and privacy studies or something along those lines right. we'll figure something out a little bit more the word the location the venue is more colloquially known as the crypto club until it becomes the c club <laughs> and then <laughs> nice. anyone who calls it anyone who dares speak the c word in public will be shunned <laughs> I think that's what happens already. And oh, what if we I just didn't shorten know. it? I use it all the time. <laughs> no, no, what if we just shorten I, I think, it to the club? I think club? we're just making this just up. Club. Don't say club. Just no. say club. Just, just, say, <laughs> just say C. 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 No, no. Shorten it beyond that. How about the? You going to the night? Exactly. Are you going to the? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Are you going to? It's it's yeah. a telepathic thing. Yeah, you just are you going? It's okay. Perfect. How about just so I just look at Rob and go. Exactly. You just you just know by the. I just know. So um, what his nose is always pointing in that direction. That's why his head moves funny when you <laughs> when he walks when he walks around the room. Oh yeah, when people shake me. Why are they shaking you? I don't know, man. Because you're your baby, shaking baby I just, syndrome. I just go with it though. It's weird. Yeah, I get that. So anywho, crypto club <laughs> or whatever the hell it's called, yeah. um, sell us on it. Go. So yeah, the, I you know, there's an obvious problem in society. Uh, 
that's been around for a very, very long time. And uh, every now and then solutions, technological solutions come along and sort of break us out of a rut, you know, like when, when we figured out to, how to shape stones and so on. Um, that, that was a sort of point beyond which we wouldn't go back on. You know what I'm saying? There are always going to be stones and all you need is information in order to be able to do it. Um, it's that's gotten, you know, the state comes in and says, we, we're, you know, the arbiters of this information. We're the arbiters of uh, society. When in reality, it's man's use of tools um, that, uh, you know, provides them with their ability to survive. And uh, one of the things that's happening nowadays, even though we have the internet, I think is that, uh, you know, even big companies like NASA are actually withholding information, um, as it were, um, and it, it restricting people's access um, to space by their, by their crazy regulations. And the idea is basically to educate people. I, I mean, I'm sort of going into space right now, but, <laughs> but the idea is, is to educate people um, and, and, and ourselves on the way um, uh, to provide ourselves with the things that the government says it is providing us with. And you know. so on a more uh, honed-in level in terms of the space itself, we're just trying to promote all that kind of activity. Right. So, for, exam for example, my, you know, when I started thinking about this, I really wanted to have a hacker space, uh, and I think, that, I think that that's on the cards. Um, one, you know, one of my own opinions is that, uh, is that copyright retards society and civilization, um, and that... Uh, uh, we can have a space that sort of disregards that nonsense and mm -hmm. you know opens uses open source technologies to uh to to basically break the back of the government you know to build our own society that doesn't need their pipes and tubes and whistles yeah. so what um events would be at this location so for example we might have educational events where people learn how to you know how to use current cryptocurrencies you know, maybe a little bit more in depth on how cryptocurrencies work. Um, my own personal, uh, you know, I like to have some engineering involved, and so I'd like to, you know, and science. So I'd like to have uh, things like a 3D printer that we wheel out, and people, you know, people can use that sort of thing. Um, and also, uh, you know, in the space, we're going to have virtual currency transactions, so people are, you know, people are trading. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the social aspect of this space. It's interesting because we intend to keep it Federal Reserve note free to completely, which a lot of spaces around here, a lot of porcupine type transactions tend to be light on the government paper money anyway. However, we're trying to just, uh, as an experimental thing, try to get in the swing of just not using it at all, ever. It's <coughs> not, it's trying to transition to this sort of cash, as it were, cashless society. Right. And all these, all these ideas that we talk about other places, and we talk about here too at the this new space, we're going to be test running at the space as well. Seeing, just like just as the Free State Project exactly. is a melting pot, it's a experimental, it's an experimental space. The whole state is experimental space for liberty. This is a more radical, technologically radical experimental space for running the technologies and the ways of the future. How right. is this club going to be run? <laughs> uh, <coughs> I mean, it's a valid question. I don't know. I mean, like, you know, the right. Quill and Area 23 are run very differently. Like, I'm curious right. how this is going to be run. Is there going to be membership? Is there going to be, like, do you pay dues for the events? Um, if there is membership, how is that vetted? Right. Like, how, how is it going to be run and operated? Right. We haven't one of the main things that we've talked about is is how w we'll communicate with one another and how we might technically develop organization for you know for example for for mesh networks we might need to do some sort of funding or kickstarter or something like that in order to get the funding to do that um, in terms of in terms of the sort of social aspects of it it is kind of an elite society in, in a sense because not very many people are in it it's not a very huge hacker space uh, i mean we're hoping friends you know people will bring, fr bring friends around the, uh, but the idea is, is quite, yeah, it's, it's not that we're going to, you know, technically a feat or anything like that. The idea is actually to spread the, the, the information that, you know, we need, we need in order to survive 
outside of a government-run society. Yeah, now mm-hmm. as part of it being an experimental, uh, experimental space, some of the some of the structure might change over time. But a good way to start is one have everyone have it uh, have it by event to begin with, not like an open all hours kind of thing where people can come in and steal all kinds of different alcohol, etc. <laughs> No, no pun intended to anyone in this room. And <laughs> have it an event, event-based thing and invite people who are on this cryptographic messaging system who have been you know, sort of by invitation only to be in the loop and then operate on a voluntary pay-what-feels-right well, pay tipping system. Who would send the invites is my question. Like, how, how would you become part of it um, with, um, obviously by invite at first, but how do you become inv- uh, involved with it? And uh, um, it, how often are there going to be events? So who would send the invites? I don't know. I'm just curious. Well, I, like it's a, I, I'm just staff, curious. How, right? is, yeah, is there going to be a staff? Right, this guy like, right here, he's going to start. You know, is is there if I told you, I would have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and invitation will, you know, we'll get, start with word of mouth to begin with. Yeah. I well, mean, I mean, you're, you're it's, start, it's well, more to do well, about who's, word of mouth. Who's, like you're, you're, who's you're, interested you're in talking in two different ways because, like, you're on the show to talk about it in the in the public. Right. Like this is a public no, venue. I, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you're, you, I'm asking a question. You're going straight. Like, it's private. It's it's a secret. <laughs> well, and it's like, well, this isn't secret. We're out in the open right now. You're talking right. about it. Well, the concept, so, the concept is out in the open. Now, the, as for the actual thing and who's involved and stuff, and the location, as as a- and the location, all that it's, it's all un- is to be notified cryptographically. Unknown. We're letting the world know. And then we're going to test out the strength of the crypt- cryptographic messaging system in order to get this, see how it works within an event space, and then you know, person by person, they just you know, spreads sort of like the Facebook groups for all Free State Project type related, all Porcupine related groups. There's no comprehensive list of them. They, there have been a few people who tried to. It's just kind of, well, yeah, let me add you to this group. Oh, you want to be parts of these groups and then let me know in. And so that's kind of the basis we're going on to begin to start out with. Of course, cutting edge changes, right? Things can be different down the line. I'm not ruling anything like that out, but this is a good way to start. See, see, if a radical new way kind of well, I'm not saying that it should be advertised like at the you know on the on the street like this is the crypto club or anything right. like that. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that in any way, shape, or form. I'm not asking like you know that. I'm well, just scared, you know. We kind of you know there's quite a few, operations. There's quite a few of us so you know that who perhaps want to keep ourselves uh, out of the public eye. You're doing a damn great job being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> at well, least you know, no no not all of us don't mind that. Well, no. <laughs> No details have been shared about the space other than the whole conceptual type stuff. We, we could enough pro- enough information for the right people to find out more. Okay, I, I don't know. I'm a little confused. That was it. really cryptographic right there. Yeah. That was good. Exactly. I like that. I like that. So that's <laughs> a, the. I've run into this issue when well, I issue. I've run into this situation a lot when talking to people who want to move for liberty, they want to make a difference, but they don't want to move to New Hampshire for the Free State Project. And they're just like, well, I can't. Whatever excuses they have, we don't need them. Well, right? no, no, I, I get we you on that. That's like with the Free State Project. I yeah. want people that actually have seek this out and whatnot. This isn't the liberty movement. This is the v- elite vanguard of the liberty movement. And so this is, we don't need, ever. not everyone can be an elite. Otherwise, elite means nothing. And so... What we're looking for <laughs> with this is to be the lead, the head crypto anarchist, as it were, to be involved with this and get and get into that. And it might not be again for everyone, but this is the great experimental stage that then the users of this kind of technology slash way of life, etc., will then be a, be able to adopt that once we figured out does all this stuff work, right? Like, can we? Add, is there a reliable efficient nice solid cryptographic messaging system that's not like a pain yeah. to use and it, actually is there a mesh net that we can actually use that's going to yeah. work uh, yeah, can you establish what would you use a mesh network for uh you know so that you can uh in a way breaking the the hedge enemy of of uh the the, the essentially state-run isps 
uh that's that's the the final outcome of it um isn't it yeah tra- it's to basically get around, p- it's basically to try yeah go ahead you get around the traditional like wi-fi connection so you don't have to go through at&t who will yeah rat you okay. out to the feds for literally everything that you do yeah right and so right so right now we're kind of in an interim period where we you kind of need access to the internet which is the you know the internet provided by the state essentially state-run dns um, which they can they can manipulate at any Doesn't time. Doesn't Namecoin help with that? Uh, oh yes, indeed it does. And so those are the types of technologies that that we would be you know talking about and investigating and and trying to actually put into practice. Yeah, it's like I know um, uh, Michael Dean, the creamy D, is all about the Namecoin, um, and uh, like I, I love the idea of it, like where it's like you know using like the blockchain as literally a way of as a DNS server where mm-hmm. like that you can. Uh, s- even if they the the feds or I can took down your the you know the, the ability to type in like Rebel Love Show and it wouldn't be there anymore. No, you wouldn't be able to get to it through a normal web browser, but through an extension on Firefox or Chrome, or whatever. Yeah, right. With Namecoin, you'd so. be able to get there anyways on the blockchain. Like, yeah. um, though we don't have that set up. Right. <laughs> we should though, but we don't. And that's kind of that's kind of like one of the you know in the in the long confabulating title what was it again i can't remember <laughs> it's ed- education is in there somewhere privacy studies yeah studies that's it yes or education or whatever we'll, yeah we'll studies we'll find a nice fine acronym that suits all purposes and is boring as a motherfucker because <laughs> that's that's what these things are for and the crypto club is like the, the sassy name now with all these technologies and new ways of life there's there's you some sort of conceptualization, like ideas. And the ideas come into like an invention. And between invention and broad public use, there's this gulf of we have this thing. We have drones that we can theoretically use to use surveillance and do uh, flyer over yeah. and do uh, filming. We need of. our own drones. Exactly. But between that and pu- public use, there's the trial and error. Be- between the coding and the final release of the game, there's the beta testing, right? Uh huh. And so this is the beta test. We are in the liberty movement here in New Hampshire are the beta testers of well, like the radical ideas of liberty. Yeah. And this is sort of the beta testing grounds for the more radical cryptography and, and crypto anarchist kind of uh, ideas and technologies. Okay. It's trying to see if they work in the real world before they get widespread. Another thing, altcoins. Here we go. <laughs> because <laughs> Bitcoin is not – Bitcoin is just the beginning. This whole new technology, new way of life is a potential global game changer forever. Well, now, do you think Bitcoin will at some point actually um, be replaced? I don't think it ever will. I think all coins will always – you know, come, they'll come no, and I go. Think so. I, I think Bitcoin will kind of be like – it's kind of like the gold standard of crypto. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's always going to be around. I can see other uh, – Litecoin, ha- I thought, had its like – it's momentum to become that, but it's kind of just, to me, just sort of just died off. Well, That's not died off. It's still there, it's but still there, there's yeah. no, like, hype what is behind it, like it anymore. Now? Is it like $7 or something? Yeah, yeah. It, dropped, it, it up used to, like to be 20 like, at one point? No, it was over 30 it was at one over point. 30, it was like 39 right? bucks a uh, Litecoin. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now it's down to right, 7 yeah. or 8 last time I checked. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and a lot of the altcoins follow the, the, that because but they, yeah. because they kind of need to because of, uh, you know, the threat from ASICs. But Scott Coin, dun dun dun. Yeah, you were talking a lot about <laughs> stuff a little, barely above my my comprehension level, but I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't mind reading. No, you, that's not possible. About the <laughs> about the whole reason why altcoins work very much hand in hand with Bitcoin in a global economy, about Bitcoin being sort of like the gold bullion to the individual altcoins. And do you mind going into that a little bit more? The whole why we need altcoins, especially maybe ethnocentric altcoins well there's all sorts of reasons um but just abstractly uh from a business from a from an engineering perspective the idea of forcing everybody to use that one blockchain on uh, on the entire world is, to me is just crazy um uh, altcoins give you a sort of an alternate route for 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 wealth to travel uh, and also you know the bitcoin protocol uh has been developed if you you look at it carefully, you can take the parameters of the protocol, like the the size of the block and and the the period of the uh, of the block and so on, and you can tweak those and you can make them work in different environments. So, for example, the Bitcoin protocol has kind of been tweaked 
in my opinion, as a world currency, which is what yeah, it, it is. It is a world currency. Is a world no, yeah, currency, yeah, Bitcoin right? definitely is. And it would be crazy to have it, you know, like a one minute or, or, or a 10 second block, you know, limit or whatever, because that just wouldn't work. It would, it would get hacked right away. It's essentially, you know, what, what the altcoins. But isn't every saying. altcoin a world currency now? Uh, you know, the thing is, every any, I guess any it's of the altcoins can be. If it's, on the, be, if it's on the internet, it's a they world coin. They can be, right. But, but, uh, um, for example, if you're designing a game for your, uh, if you're designing a coin for a game, you would you would tweak it completely differently, and ma and it would run in a completely different way. And of course, then it's it, there's there's risk. You might say that they can be hacked or whatever. But that's I guess that's where the where the uh, the escrow the, the Litecoin is good because they have to use you know lower class. Well, from what I can tell, that. one thing nice with Litecoin is it seems like a lot of stuff for Bitcoin is kind of tested within Litecoin. Right. Um, but uh, here, here I kind of have a question with in regards to altcoins. Do you think the amount of altcoins diminishes the fact that there is cryptocurrencies, or do you think it, it enhances it? I because sometimes think I think it, it like could water it down. Yeah, it, I think it enhances it myself. Okay. Personally, uh, it's simply because uh, a local environment can express a lot more value uh, than a distant perspective of that local em environment might give it. So, so for example, Scott, just because Bitcoin has tumbled, it doesn't say anything about what, what's happening in the business in Scotland at all. Um, and so while, while Bitcoin is tumbling, Scotcoin might be ex expanding because maybe, the, you know, maybe they're selling more bottles of whiskey now yeah. <laughs> or, taking or you know, absorbing more so oil or whatever. So when, when are you going to start Shirecoin? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm serious. If it's going to be a regional yeah. cryptocurrency, I agree. like, no, why don't I we have agree. a Shire coin? There's I been a lot of talk of that coin. or a port coin, yeah. I wouldn't call it port coin yeah. because, you know, honestly, I mean, obviously almost everyone that would use something like that right. would be in this community. But I would try and name it something that, like, locals could relate to, like and Shire. Uh, actually, I agree. I agree with that. And Lord of the Rings fans. And Lord of the Rings fans, yeah, yeah. Lord of the Rings fans, yeah, Lord of the Rings fans would jump all over that because it's a Shire, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. How about Hobbit coin? <laughs> <laughs> how about a, uh, how about Houdini donkey coin? Houdini donkey coin Houdini. to the moon. Yes, Houdini donkey coin is the way to go. <laughs> now about uh, an interesting way if people think about this. Now for the viewers at home, uh, some people this is this whole idea of multiple blockchains and multiple competing cryptocurrencies, altcoins, is very, it's pretty foreign to people who don't really know completely what a blockchain even is. And a good way of thinking about this in a historical metaphor are the precious metal standards. There were, uh, up, up before the Federal Reserve Banking and all that, there were world currencies, right? Different currencies, they still had, each region had their own currency, they were all backed by either gold or silver, and that can be sort of thought of with uh, different currencies existing within the blockchain system. Now, it's interesting to note that during the Great Depression, it was a global depression, not just an American depression, and all countries on the gold standard were affected, just like all countries when there's an economic collapse in the United States, all countries that are economically linked with America and the American dollar. It's because the Fed has reach everywhere. Exactly. Now, the countries that were not affected by the Great Depression were the ones on the silver standard, for example, China at the time. And so if something happens to Bitcoin and the whole world's on Bitcoin, it's the whole world rides that, that whole thing. And there's it's not it's not a good shock absorbent. Now, if there's... If there's economic shocks they're delivered to certain sectors of the global economy they could be they could, the people who are not responsible for these kinds of actions could be spared if they're on if they're less entirely invested and so that's an interesting parallel with the way it's worked in the past again the way the market has decided to a certain extent the market in the past okay um, you guys ever think that at some point that we'll actually look at altcoins and we'll look at their value based off the coin itself instead of comparing it to government currencies? Ideally, yeah. I mean, when, like Bitcoin I would love to be, be able to do that, but we always compare it to American. Like I always compare yeah, it what Bitcoin's worth to the dollar. Yeah, it should be. It should be uh, the other way. 
Yeah. What's well, everything worth according to Bitcoin? Well, I always That's try to word it whenever I'm buying Bitcoin. I never even say it like I'm buying Bitcoin. I always say, "Hey, I'm selling Federal Reserve notes. Yeah, that's like I want to sell them away. Like uh, who's who, you know, am I not good enough for your for you know for uh, for Federal Reserve notes? Like, do you want these? I'm selling. I don't want them. Like, here, take them. Yeah, I, I've started, and that's one of the. I'll let you get in there in a second. That's one of the strengths of the altcoins <laughs> is, right now, if I want to you know buy something small, eh, fifteen millibits, fifteen what thousands of a Bitcoin. I, I bought three. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, yesterday on, on a machine. I'm sorry, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying in, but I have three dollars well, worth. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I can't remember. That's the thing is, it's <laughs> inefficient to use as a calculation. It thing, was so especially exciting. with the value going up and down. Now, for example, a lot of people with Scott Coin, for example, are not taking it as face value. They're taking it as a Great British Pound equivalent. Exactly. In value. The right people now. that are using it on on the ground are actually trading it for for some substantial amount of a British a British pound, and a lot of them are doing it as a promotion. So, for example, I bought uh, I bought uh, twenty kilograms. <laughs> oh no, sorry, twenty two pounds uh, worth of, of uh, Scottish tablet from from a Scottish it's Highlands. A Scottish delicacy. Using using Scott coin, uh, and they were charging me. Uh, I, I I was charged two hundred and fifty Scott coin for it. Yeah, okay. and um, I have I, no idea what the conversion rate for Scott coin. So, is. so uh, yeah, so right, uh, Scott's uh, close it's, to Dogecoin, it's, right? Yeah, it's close. So, to Dogecoin. like, what uh, one Dogecoin it's, is worth? It's, ter like it's uh, terrible in, in terms of that relationship, right? Because because the people are actually, you know, the people are selling like uh, like my mother, for example, is selling a piano. She she does piano lessons, and she's doing a pound a pound equivalent um, for Scott coin. For Scott coin, and so that's the kind of thing that we can see with widespread adoption. It's like a bit more than a dollar. It's like a dollar yeah. fifty. It's like you go to like that. Um, was it Iceland? One pound to a dollar, isn't that what it is? Yeah, or like you like you do. You go to Scotland, and then you pay for your. You run up a tab, and you pay like forty Scott coin, right? And then or you know, and then that's I, a lot. I'm of not. Drinks. I'm not really sold on the the regional currencies for crypto. Like the whole point <laughs> is like the not to to be. A, to have it on the internet be open and have like a world currency so to speak i'm not against there being all c currencies technically it is because there isn't any restriction mm -hmm. uh there's not even a mining restriction on it the, uh it's i think i'm not sure if this is uh, you know exactly how true this is but it looks to me uh, i mean from my perspective that not as many people have, have taken up bitcoin in scotland as in some of the other i mean you know the shire is down here we're full of it and so in we fact, Scott Coin it. might actually <laughs> Scott Coin might actually be taking you know actually taking over at some point versus see, Bitcoin. What I what I like to see like at retail or whatnot right. or in like um, uh, in business transactions where uh, you know you scan like you know around here you can actually go to a couple of places that accept Bitcoin. You know they have they bring up their tablet or whatnot. And you scan their QR code. Right. Um, I would love to have it where they. they just literally press a button on whatever application they're maybe using mm -hmm. and automatically switches to whatever crypto wallet, you know, QR code that you want to use. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't see why that's not out of the realm of possibility. So if someone wants to use, uh, you know, Scott coin, like coin, dark coin, yeah, you know, right. Bitcoin, whatever coin you want to use, Dogecoin, like all, all you have to do is to switch to a different QR code and automatically those funds will be deposited that to their account. Right. Exactly. Now the way the that would be handy. A couple things that the regional variants have. What I like about the regional altcoins is one, it makes it, it it has an automatic association with the people of this is our money. It's not just some weird bit thing. It's not it's not a nerd kind of curiosity. It's like this is the Scott coin, for example, right. great example right here, is viewed as the currency of the Scottish people by a lot of people who have never touched a Bitcoin in their lives, but they have Scott coin. Like older generations who have that association and they're not with the, the bit thing. Also, the conversion rates, again, the whole pound for pound, literally Scott coin for pound kind of thing. It's no one's going to get behind the whole millibit thing, at least not tomorrow. It could be possible. I mean, maybe the altcoins all disappear one day and Bitcoin's the only one left, but they could be a very valuable tool in getting people using similar kind of things. And then the other thing, of course, just the strain on the various blockchains depending on like if the entire world is doing hundreds everyone is doing dozens of microtransactions with bitcoin on a daily basis all over the planet that puts a huge stress on the blockchain exactly and, and you know, you know th th there's actually a technical limit that, no, that people don't tend to talk about there's this a seven second uh uh 
uh, seven transaction per second limit because of the size of the block, and it, that's actually kind of a hard limit that requires them to do engineering to get rid of. Exactly. Um, so that's where it's sort of engineer. Yeah, go ahead. That's where altcoins come in because then yeah. you don't you're on a different blockchain. You're uh, using doing much quicker transactions and like. How much quicker is a Scott coin transaction than a Bitcoin transaction? It is. It's incredible. Uh, you know, all of the transactions that I've done, they just happen instantly. And and it's a, also it's a much lo it's a much smaller blockchain because because it, there's not that many transactions. I, I've got you know <laughs> right now there's hardly any. It's sort of almost like a ghost town. But over time, it'll still always be a much smaller blockchain. Um, the the other interesting technical thing is that um, it's designed for SHA two fifty six, which quite a number of the altcoins aren't. But what that opens up is that as the useless, basically useless uh, ASIC hardware comes down from, from, the, from the front Bitcoin, as it were. Uh, it can then be used on Scott coin. So basically, Scott coin is going to be running on recycled hardware, which otherwise wouldn't have anywhere to go. How is the adoption of, of Scott coin there? Um, in terms of the market, it's, there's, there's a fair few number of people transacting on the market, and sometimes it has quite high volume, uh, even more than Dogecoin and a few others uh, that are quite high up the list. Yeah, um, no. But in terms of the, the adoption, it's not huge. But there, you know, it's it, it's slow but steady. I mean, it's only been a few months, really. It's like four or five months. Yeah. It, and now, okay. how is the in terms of mi meetups, right? Bitcoin meetups. How do Bitcoin meetups and Scott coin meetups compare in Scotland? So here's the thing. Now there are Scott coin meetups in, in essentially every every major city already. <laughs> okay, now here's my question. Was and there's only like there's only sorry there's only like one Bitcoin meetup uh, uh, for quite some time in all of Scotland. Yeah, in all of Scotland. Okay, all right. Well, well here it's different. Like there's a bunch of Bitcoin meetups, but yeah, um, right. how does Scott Coin uh, relate to Scottish independence from Great Britain? Yeah, there you go. Like that's where I'm kind of curious. Like, I what, what's like, I mean, you have ties back there. Yeah. So like, what what, is, what? How does that relate? And also, what's the like, um, motivation and uh, s I guess uh, the thought on Scottish independence. Right. So it, it, obviously, uh, to have their own currency, virtual currency, would would be something that would assist that greatly. Um. I participate in the stream quite frequently, and it's sort of distressing living here in this type of freedom, and listening to the sort of people over there who are asking for independence. You know, they're 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 not really asking for the same type of independence. It's something different. It's like, uh, you know, uh, they sort of they want to be independent from England, but they want to be part of Europe. And and I'm like, what does that mean for independence? And they want we want the euro or we want the pound. And it's like that. No, that's not the way to do it. And so from my perspective, I want them to take on uh, this type of currency. And per personally, I think it would be the best thing for them to do. Well, and there's Bitcoin as well, of course. Well, I mean, well, one thing great with cryptocurrencies is it allows um, regions to break away and not have to exactly. worry about creating some sort of, like, you know, exactly. like government issue currency because they can just adopt bitcoin or scott coin or litecoin or whatever whatever cryptocurrency they can create one you know it doesn't really matter but they that can uh easily take place and they wouldn't have to worry about some bank or government issuing currency when you can just have a cryptocurrency there it, it it takes away one whole like plank of like well we have to be part of this because like, who's gonna where's the money gonna come from where are you gonna have currency from you know if new hampshire declared independence people were like well you know it was new hampshire gonna issue uh currency like well, well no we would just use bitcoin you know exactly yeah now i think interestingly enough one of the people of the three of us, maybe not the four of us, because Ian's been quite the adopter in everything crypto, mm -hmm. but the three of us is probably Shire Dude, Andrew, who's done the most Bitcoin transactions in the smallest <laughs> amount of time. So you've also, of course, done FRN transactions, traditional things like we all have because we've all been part of this slave society. So tell me, what has your experience been with crypto, not well, mostly Bitcoin, of course, but also with other altcoins in doing business as a practical kind of thing. We're talking a lot of theory and greater social trends, but you're the guy on the ground who's yeah. actually having to use this. So what do you think? Uh, it's it's so much more useful. Um, I've gone into uh, several different agorist business ventures since I've been in the Shire, um, and most of them have just been to get Bitcoin because it's such a more useful currency. You can uh, transfer it you know, faster, Obviously, you don't have to give someone like dollars to their hand or send them 
money online, which is really complicated. You have to get like their account number, like their bank account number. I've paid my rent in Bitcoin. Um, I did that uh, last month, I believe. Wow. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just it, all around it's a better currency. I mean, you know, uh, crypto versus fiat at least. Here's now, a how does – really quick, how does Bitcoin – differ for from your personal experience from the other altcoins we're talking a lot of theory have you used other altcoins i i day traded with altcoins for a little while but i i realized how dangerous that was i i made a little bit of money on uh, btc-e with um trading pure coin for some reason i got lucky but that's i know all it is is luck and i don't do that anymore yeah you, you don't yeah. want to get into the whole dump and pump because yeah, you yeah. Get burned. if you're careful you'd be up all you night know to get lucky um our 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 very yeah. own uh, objectivist girl, Lauren Rumpler, got um, she got a little burned on dark coin. Really? I don't know if you guys heard about that. I no, didn't I hear didn't about hear about that. Don't, don't bring sure up her burn on. She, I'm well, sure you heard about it. No, it it happens, and you know we gotta we gotta talk about this stuff. You gotta be really careful, especially when day trading those altcoins. Yeah, um, well, you, you can know, make a fortune relatively quickly, you but you can like also like be burned really quickly yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, it's you, gambling. You, it's just like it's like going to a casino. You get really lucky, yeah. or exactly the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're day trading like that, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, I had a question for you, uh, Andrew. You're from Southern California. Yeah. Did you do much? Uh, oh, by the way, I'm gonna be September. I'm gonna be there. Look me up, and be thank there. you for hooking me up. Yeah. I'm gonna be, be there. there. Look me up. I want to hang out with Liberty people in California. Anywho, um. What's your perspective of? Did you even use Bitcoin before you like you know on a daily basis before in, you got here? Or? In California, I was just buying it and holding it. Um, I I tried like relentlessly to convince businesses to accept my bitcoins, and I was actually the first person to buy a beer for Bitcoin in Orange County. At, really? At the what? copper there at the go. copper door in Santa Ana. They take amazing. Bitcoin That's there. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, they did at least for that night. I'm not sure if they're still doing it. They had um. I believe their payment system was the uh, it's called Revel, um, and it's just their POS system, and it w it had a Bitcoin option already built into it. What about the when Liberty is the Rebel Love Show going to be the Revel Love <laughs> Show? <laughs> what What about the Liberty community? There is like, does everyone have like a Bitcoin um, wallet on their phone and whatnot? Yeah, they tend to be Bitcoin enthusiasts. Okay, also, um, well, I know like in like the, the so tech techie the techies yeah. in California, especially uh, San Francisco, they're yeah. all about the Bitcoin, obviously. But yeah. I'm just curious about the Liberty community. There. I, I ran uh, Liberty on the Rocks of Orange County. I, I started that when I was still there, and um, we threw a Bitcoin themed meetup, which was and I probably will always be the most successful meetup we ever had. The oh, most turnout. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. How many people do you have there? We had like somewhere over 40 people crowding into this little Yeah, that makes this little that's, brewery. That's big for a uh, Liberty Unrighted. That's, that's yeah. big for not the Shire. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, yeah. For the Democratic People's Republic of California. Oh, that's huge. Oh, yes. Bum, bum, yeah. Now, uh, speaking of event spaces and events in this whole Jeez. thing, so the Crypto Club aims to be you know, another event slash social space here in Manchester in addition to the quill area 23 has left manchester and is hopefully moving up to concord hopefully it's going to be successful there in the coastal region in the free coast in portsmouth the free coasters the seal occupines are <laughs> uh, i wanted the to call sirens them. Yeah, they, their siren song. They're trying to lure us out to be dashed against the rocks of the coast by opening up <laughs> the coast of freedom, the Praxium, <laughs> which is their own event space, and they're moving fast. These guys know how to do stuff. They're moving fast, and I can't wait to get involved with that. And I they just have like a festival coming up soon. Oh yeah, I want to go to that too. Uh, anyway, well, I'm sure we'll report more from the ground when and if that happens. But what I like when I arrived here again, I have not been here a year yet. When I arrived here in the Shire, there was the Keen Activism Center and the Quill in the entire state. The Area 23 wasn't a thing yet. Now we have Area 23. We, it came so and it came and went, and it's coming back. Yeah, and now we have Area 23. It's coming back. Now we have the Praxium. It's like about to happen, and the Crypto Club is probably going. I don't know. We might race Area 23 out the door. <laughs> you know, we're we're getting that going. So that's three extra event spaces, which are, which make this more than just oh, there's a bunch of people who might know each other on Facebook who might crowd into like each other's houses once in a while. It makes it makes a rev rebellion into like a bona fide resistance. Right. That now we have flashpoints and we have actual 
meeting places to plot our nefarious deeds of just kind of like hanging out and experimenting with tech and just That's living free kind of and doing nothing <laughs> that could be a threat to anyone exactly. in the world making, except for anti-liberty cool people. Yeah, making cool stuff, flying our little drones around, flying them around, you know, just getting them lost over the woods, you oh, know, all that fun stuff. Freedom's right? really powerful and, uh, you know, open source is really powerful too and there's a lot of stuff out there that we can do to, to uh, get away from what the state is, is paying, making us pay through the nose for, now, as we say in Scotland. Net, <laughs> net mesh networking. Imagine if each of these event spaces had some kind of, you know, internet source. Yeah, exactly. And then they carefully built out a mesh, mesh nodes um, expanding out from that location. And so this would be, each of these event spaces would be hubs of stateless technology, stateless communication, and eventually you have enough of these places and then the whole fast swaz or the whole state, the whole area can become uh, on a completely independent information network. That could be really exactly. a cool thing to start. And that's one thing that I really wanted to start doing with the Crypto Club is start experimenting with this kind of technology so that then maybe the Quill, Area 23, the Praxium, the Keen Activism Center, all these things start adopting the same model. And then whenever you're in a Liberty neighborhood, you're part of this whole thing. And it's like now you're – because I've seen a lot of the Porcupine community – they come and they go. They some sometimes they move here and disappear. A so lot of them move here and disappear, which move, is always yeah, weird. Yeah, sometimes to me. they move here and disappear by choice. Sometimes they just move here and they never knew there was anything to join or come to. And I I think it's a good idea to try to erase that kind of thing. I, it to plug people in because the la last mover party. It was a great new movers oh, yeah. party last night. Last that was night, fantastic. Yeah. There yeah. was like seven what? families. Like, really yeah, it's amazing to see seven families moving like within the last month. Yeah, a bunch of children, yeah. a little puppet show with the box. They were and then playing the, the uh, on the on the yeah. Uh, and we have the, It was really good. They were playing computer games on the projector. We have the <laughs> wonderful Jessica Love to thank for organizing that. But that's a lot of yeah, work. She did a great job yeah, organizing she, she the is. last she two movers parties. Do, does do the great job doing these things, but I'd like to not have to rely on a great organizer. I'd like to have it so that people can just show up and get just plugged in. Well, how are you going to do that if it's cryptic? Have you got to find it? Well, and that's an honest well, question. If, you, if you're gonna if you're going to do it as a crypto club, like you said, it's well, cryptic and only the elite elite. Well, no, no. How, are you going to? How are you going to? Two different things. Once here. you're ready, you'll know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, but how, how how is this <laughs> random people that get here right that are just going to plug in? <laughs> now, the if if you have to ask, you're just not there yet. <laughs> And we'll have to kill you with the katana in the corner. I keep it in the corner of that room right there and for a reason. And now, it's the Crypto Club is where we experiment, where we debut these technologies and approaches and get them to where they can, where they're functional in society, and then they get to be used. And so, like, the mesh network thing doesn't need to be a cryptographic thing necessarily. It could be a. No, I think they are there. Mo most of the stuff that they're putting. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm trying to make. Source. I'm trying to make an argument. You just, you <laughs> just sorry. make me out to be a fool. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I should shut my mouth. And <laughs> hang my head in ignorance. Well, all the, the, <laughs> these they tend to be fairly. You know, yeah. th there are actually. I'm not being a conspiracy conspiracy theorist or whatever it's called, but there there are back doors in these freaking commercial routers. There really are. And so this, so the, like the C, whoever is the NSA can actually hack the router that you. Like yeah, most Nick, most Netgear, most there's uh, a bunch of different ones. most hardware equipment that comes out, like whether it's uh, phones, routers, yeah. wha it, whatever it may be, there's always right. uh, back doors for the NSA. But but there's a bunch there's a bunch of open source uh, router technologies right now, uh, the, uh, or router uh, firmware upgrades that you can use to get rid of those back doors, and uh, that's the type of thing we'll be sort of looking into installing and. Educating ourselves about it so that we know. Create, so, you know, um, create secure that. networks that people can exactly. access and exactly. just be. Because Facebook is it's the best tool available to us right now because it was a well designed social network. And yeah, you've got to know they're listening into that, right? You just yeah. Know. So I, I assume everything I say and do is being recorded exactly. by somebody else. Right. I yes. always assume that, whether, obviously, this is public, but anything I do on my computer or my phone or whatnot, or even out in person, I'm assuming. That that is, that's, yeah. you know, someone may have access to yeah. it. Yeah, when when I dance in the shower, I assume somebody's watching. <laughs> yeah, you should. You <laughs> never oh, know. They are. Yeah, when I 
Don't be ashamed of who you are. Dance. Dance away, man. Embrace it. Dance all the time. Why do you wear underpants in the shower? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's... When we're trying to establish these networks, right? So right now, the whole Facebook network tends to be a little bit cumbersome because it wasn't designed for this kind of thing. It was designed for just plain old social networking, not to run a movement on. And now if we design our own network so that someone could just join it and be able to be plugged into all the... You still need a presence on those social networks. So I understand what you're saying. I I completely get... Yeah, it's like that. you need that as like an outreach tool. You know, there's people on there. You got to bring them on. Like, I know there's a huge movement like six months ago to a year ago about getting everyone on diaspora or diaspora. How yes, that's right. Yes, uh, I, I was, I, was, I, I have a, a diaspora, just diaspora. How often diaspora? do you use it? I haven't used it even There, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once. yeah uh, no, I maybe used it once. Uh, you still need that time. bridge, right? Like, how did the resistance reach Neo in the Matrix? Yeah, yeah. You still need it like so, that. Yeah, so exactly. You just can't jack yourself out of the matrix. Some, you know, you need Morpheus there to like, you know, bring you to the chair and give you the red pill. You know, you need, yeah. you need, you need that. You yeah. need that, like that you reach need, out. You need Morpheus to grin at you in a fashion that exposes his gapped front teeth. And having having a club like that sort of, you know, puts us in the position of using it all the time, so it will become second nature to us. You see, yeah, and it'll be easier for us to pass it on if if we just do do it like that it's, all the it's time. It's like an elite training ground. They exactly. don't just develop. And we're kind of in, in incubation right now, so it's like it's hard. You know, we're not like turning into a big giant thing with a huge CIA tower or anything like that right now. But exactly. And yeah. so I think yeah. it's important that us in the community learn to experiment with these things as much as possible till it becomes second nature. Like that's why I love using Bitcoin. I have gone whole weeks on just Bitcoin in this community just to see if I can, just to see what it's like. Because we're talking about, oh, the free world will only have this. And then, yeah, right. How do we get from there here to there? I've I've actually put ourselves out I've been living on uh, Bitcoin since 2010. I I heard about it in 2009. And essentially, I mean, I've used ferns. I have to trade them all the time. But all the money that I've essentially spent on everything that I've had has been... Has has been laundered through Bitcoin. See, laundered. one thing is like I, w- I don't even want to sell Bitcoin. You know, I don't want to buy Federal Reserve notes with Bitcoin. I would, I would like just to use Bitcoin and you know getting paid and spending it, like just not even right. using their money. Period. Um, I do think there is a need for more uh, agorist businesses in the community. Uh, there's there's not enough. There's a, there's plenty. Don't get me wrong. There there's there's plenty of agorist business. Yeah. That, you know, agorists that are in this community. But I would love to see more. Um, agorists like starting up their own businesses, yeah, and then those, they come and go. At least in Manchester, and then some end up falling off the truck, and then right. you don't really hear about them for a while. But, yeah, you know things happen. And that's the thing with the crypto club. What all this, the security that these approaches that we debut makes agorism a lot more comfortable of a thing to deal with because it's if you just go openly, just openly flaunting the state. They're gonna come and smack you down. You go sell lemonade out on the street corner. They will arrest They'll you. They'll lock you down. Yeah. Yes, they will arrest you because you're right there in their face. Now, if you're kind of discreet about it, the problem with discretion is it limits your communication potential. There, there's there's Until a risk involved. Now. Until now, when we're trying to now develop effective systems of communicating and using all this, and a way in a way that makes agorism as efficient as above ground businesses at the same time as it you have that ma- that efficiency and profit margin difference out of just operating without the cumbersome state i think more the more and more that you know mainstream businesses like actually learn what cryptocurrencies are especially like the importance of the blockchain like you know honestly b- the blockchain itself is a hell of a lot more important than the actual cr- any cryptocurrency the fact that there's an online ledger of every transaction with that currency it's all accounted for and it can be used for more than just you know it can be used for contracts and everything like that um that in itself regardless of the currency is like the you know once more and more there's not just people but companies like learn that like that is like that is the reason to use it. I think you'll see more and more adoption, not just from Liberty folk, but like, you know, the populace in general. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Now, as far as everything we have to do to get from point A to point B, the technology and the adoption is one thing. There's a lot of hardcore on the ground activism and fighting to just get just a lot of struggle involved to get uh, Liberty on widespread adoption. And speaking of which, 
out in Keene, uh, Shard dude and I quit the day today, didn't we? Yeah, man. Yeah, we were all over Keene today. Yeah, like um, first thing in the morning. Well, first and a half thing in the morning. <laughs> we showed up and we were visiting a couple of good friends in jail. Rich Paul, legendary. The retreat. The spiritual yeah, retreat. The spiritual retreat center. Yeah. We were, <laughs> we were visiting Rich Paul, who was a guest on one of our earlier episodes, one of our better episodes, if I would say so myself. A dark episode. Dark episode. Yeah, it was real. It was. About, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was about, about all funny games. Real background. About go watch that episode if you haven't watched it yet. Yeah, if you don't know the story of Rich Paul, look up the Ballad of Rich Paul on YouTube. By that's the, on the Desert Links. The Desert YouTube Links. Channel. Yeah, that's a conden- condensation. That's but a the great, condensation yeah. as great as that is. You want to see the whole hour-long Rebel Love Show episode because there's a lot more cool stuff in there. Gets and, real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so Rich Paul, again, he's not w- with us right now because he is locked away. Because all this kind of stuff that we're talking about, he was being an agorist, and, you know, they got him for it. And so he's rotting in this jail cell right now because of that, and so we we can't just leave our friends behind. We have to go see him. We have to go. Let us let them know that we're still there. We support them, and that we're not abandoning. And if you're listening at home, write them. Yeah, I know. And Send there them have a been a, there have been a few people who have approached us about contacting Rich Paul and uh, Graham Colson. And yeah, well, let us know. We'll we'll hook you up. We should put the is link to uh, that in the show notes. We will. Of it how to contact is mail to jail dot com still operational? I don't know. We gotta check that out. I, I know that's run out of key. I'm almost sure it is. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. But um, anywho, besides that, uh, I'm excited about Friday night. Another DUI checkpoint. Another checkpoint. You're gonna be. Uh, you were talking about it earlier in the show. I'm calling you out on the show. You're going to live stream it. it? You're going to do it? I got this big old battery That's going to be a lot of data, this man. This thing uh, holds three uh, charges. Okay. Uh, so I do you should... have unlimited data? Because that's going to blow through your data. Oh, I got it. Uh, I'm fine. Um, okay. It's worth it. So, so you're gonna, are you going to be holding both ca- your phone and your uh, your camera at the same time? Or are you going like, to mount your, you're gonna mount your phone like on your head or something like that while you're holding your camera? What are you going to do? Derek yes. J. was talking to me about this earlier. He was talking about using a tripod for my uh, actual nice uh, camera that shoots in HD and then rubber banding my uh, cell phone. Yeah, put it on, like, on top or something streaming like that. To on top that of it. same yeah, tripod. Yeah, you should. So you get the good footage and then the live footage yeah. at the same Derek time. Derek J. knows how to run a tight ship oh yeah you you ever seen um there is a there's a youtube video of uh i think it was like on um it was where uh luke radowski like was like talking shop with pete air about like videotaping he's like showing his rig and like how like all the lives like he has like four or five cameras on him at any given time like on his vest and he has like a, a like a tripod thing like around his shoulder and then he's holding another camera and he has another audio recording device and so, some of that streaming to bamboozer <laughs> and all that crazy stuff that sounds almost like a it sounds almost it, uh, almost like a par- like a parody mockery of like a key freaky well, activist or something <laughs> with like a million yeah well he's all all, he's place. also like you know crazy like you know, paid to do that stuff so i would love to see like if you want to help us, donate us some uh, Google Glass or some spy cameras or like that goes to like the data. Like I would love to have that, so I don't even have to hold a camera. If you want to live, that'd be great to live stream from. If glasses. you don't have any lying around, yeah, we do accept Bitcoin. There's going to be a big at the end of the show. There's a bam, 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 music, bam, and there's big Bitcoin donate logo on a QR code. We love Bitcoin, so please send us some. Oh, yeah. speaking of Bitcoin, can I give our guest uh, the special surprise that I brought for him? If you make it quick, well, yeah, we're no, running out of time quick, here, super like quick. super Shoot quick. from the hip there, boy. Let's see how quick oh. I can print him a paper wallet from the Piper awesome. paper wallet printer. Of course, hiding the uh, the p- private key because that will give you all his money. <laughs> so let's see if I can. Oh, here it goes. It's printing. Do we have the camera on this? Look at that. Now I know the public key prints on top, so I can show you that. If you want to send him any money. Right about there. Yeah, I don't know if that'll work, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I will hide the private key for him. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not a great just idea. Be taken immediately. On the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. This kind of thing has been happening happen before. But hey, I'm not a newscaster. Come on, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got so, so many people like tagging me in messages when I have oh, like, I you know, you. your Bitcoin what could be stolen. <laughs> well, yeah, because you showed the private keys on TV. Because <laughs> you don't know how you you. Do you even crypto, bro? Do you even crypto? Yeah, so I'm going to put this into this, this thing. Oh, yeah, he's got to hide that away. Also mentioned a paper <laughs> wallet into a I wallet. Know, what is this? I also, 
Don't, mentioning... don't put this on film. Don't tell anyone about this. Now we're doing, <laughs> as as far as the Rebel Love shows, business is concerned. We have at we have at we're starting to add bloggers to the Rebel Love Show website, who to report from various things, various happenings around the Shire. We've added our first extra blogger, who's not an official member of the team, Derek J. Freeman, out of Keene, New Hampshire, and he is Team Keene. He's letting us know everything is going on from the Keene Act perspective, and so if you want, if you want to basically know what's going on in Keene. You can go to freekeen.com. You can go to derekj.me. You can go to all these kinds of things. You can also go to rebelloveshow.com. And everything there that's happening in Keen is now being reported on thanks to our wonderful friend, Derek J. Freeman. Kudos to you. You're such an inspiration. What a now, champ, yeah. We Who do a lot of love stuff. Derek J. He's great. Who yeah. doesn't, man? He is the reason I'm here. I we can list crime that. spree, man. Yeah. That, that inspired me, too, man. Mm-hmm. That, that, uh, that inspired me to sign, yeah. and the whole Conquer Bearcat inspired me to move. Yeah, we yeah. all have our inspirations, and it's great to have one of us collaborating with us. Now, And we currently have Manchester pretty well covered, but hey, Concord, Nashua, Free Coast, anywhere else. I if love you, to see more stuff come out of Nashua. You, I know there's Liberty people. If you there. have something to write, you can. if you just want to write about stuff that's happening there once Grafton. in a while. Grafton. Come on, Grafton. Grafton I want to know what's going on, Grafton. Come on, Grafton. Come on. Get an internet connection oh, for man. the love of fucking flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> Something. Like, is there anything going on? I know there's people there. What, what, what's up? Are there people there? Or are they just like animals? I would read a Grafton blog post. Like, they have the, the edge, highest concentration of Liberty people, from apparently. From the edge of my seat. It's just, yeah. Oh. So we need bloggers. We need someone from Grafton. We need someone from Nashua. We need someone from the coast. Someone from Concord and maybe someone Lakes Co-op somewhere else where who gives a shit, whatever. But, yeah, if you're from there and you want to write for us, we're more than welcome to publish your stuff, assuming you can construct an adequate sentence and talk about stuff that's happening in the Porcupine slash Liberty community. (sighs) I'm done. There we go. All right. uh, We getting this done? We're good? All right. Let's do this. Uh, First off, uh, Ian, is there any any place that anyone can find you at? Do you do any media or whatnot or blogging or website? or Where can people find you? Crypto to you. No, there isn't anywhere. No. <laughs> All right, there, there we go then. Well, there will be soon. Yes, okay. There will be soon. Will be. Stay tuned. We'll make be. special announcements. Make Again, rebelofshow.com. It all happens there. We will approach, the collective will approach the community. The hive mind. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. All right. You're a tough guy. <laughs> all right. You can find all of our content again at RobloShow.com, Stitcher's iTunes. Go uh, subscribe to us on Stitcher or iTunes. That'd be Sweet. great. And, you know, listen to us. And uh, you can always go find uh, Andrew here at ShireDude.com. ShireDude.com. There you go. ShireDude.com. There's links. I'm working on it. I got it. Like, it's coming. That's fine. All right. And uh, we're out, guys. Peace. 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 Peace.